Apple's new MacBook Pro, an interesting device for sure, but we've seen the criticisms that between the lack of an SD card reader, its extremely limited hardware specs considering who it's purportedly aimed at, and an I.O. setup that will leave the vast majority of people either reaching for adapters or buying new cables altogether, it just doesn't seem geared towards professionals at all. And on the latest WAN show, we actually threw our two cents into the pile. Every 13-inch MacBook Pro has no dedicated GPU. I'm sold. No one will ever need more than 8 gigs of RAM. They don't even have They're quad dual cores. They don't even have quad-core processors. No one needs more than two cores. Apple didn't bother to respond to our comments directly. I guess Tim Cook doesn't watch the WAN show for some reason. But one issue has apparently generated so much discussion that Apple's Phil Schiller made an official statement to The Verge defending their decision to limit the MacBook Pro to 16 gigabytes of RAM. They claim that putting more than 16 gigs of fast RAM into a notebook design at this time would require a memory system that consumes much more power and wouldn't be efficient enough for a laptop. But how much battery does RAM use? Is this a valid defense? Let's investigate. Cooler Master's Mastercase Maker 5 features their freeform modular system, allowing you to customize, adjust, and upgrade. Make it yours at the link below. Apple will have to forgive me when I immediately raised an eyebrow like Dwayne The Rock Johnson, although I can't do it nearly as well, when they announced that not only would their base configurations max out at 16 gigs, but that you wouldn't be able to upgrade it later. On consumer stuff, I find this type of locking down less offensive, but they're doing a lot of stuff that just seems to be designed to make their hardware less repairable and more disposable. I mean, MacBook Pro batteries are glued to the case. And this situation is no different with the memory. It's soldered onto the logic board. Apple's official explanation was that a memory system with more than 16 gigs of RAM would draw too much power from the laptop, like I said earlier. But is that really true? Is 32 gigabytes really too much for a mobile platform to handle well? Especially considering many MacBook Pro buyers are professional content creators or Chrome users who might actually make use of all of that memory. To find out, we looked at the power consumption of different memory configurations, not just in a laptop, but in a desktop as well, just to dive a little bit deeper. Our benchmark on all tests was five minutes of the memory stress test only in Ida64 Extreme. For our first test, we use 8 gig 6 of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 on our usual test bench in 8, 16, and 32 gigabyte configurations. There was a 20 watt delta in our highest and lowest amounts of RAM, but was this due to more gigabytes or more RAM sticks? So we put our two sticks of Corsair LPX against four sticks of A-Data XPG DDR4, since the A-Data sticks were only four gigs a piece. Both setups came in at a total of 16 gigabytes of RAM. The four sticks drew a little bit more power, but not much more, as there was only a five watt difference. We also looked at how different RAM voltages affected power consumption, putting up two sticks of our 1.2 volt Corsair LPX against two sticks of 1.35 volt Corsair Dominator. As with our other tests, we made sure to turn on XMP profiles to make sure they were actually drawing the voltages indicated on the box. The 11 watt difference was definitely more than we were expecting. All in all, the differences between our different RAM setups for desktop weren't insignificant. So is there really something to Apple's claim? Time to dig deeper. So we switched over to an Acer Predator 15 laptop as it uses the same Skylake architecture CPU type and DDR4 RAM as our desktop test bench. And then we paired it with Crucial and A-Pacer SoDIMS, that is laptop memory. Obviously, we would have liked to have tested this on one of the new MacBook Pros themselves, but thanks to its completely non-swappable RAM, this wasn't really an option. After testing one and two sticks of both eight and 16 gigabyte modules, the difference in battery drain was almost negligible. 
The difference between one stick of 8 gigs and two of 16, remember, that's a total of 32 gigabytes, was only 105 milliwatt hours. In each scenario, the memory stress test drained about 4% of the Predator's battery. So there was no massive spike in discharge rate when we upped our system to 32 gigs. Now admittedly, this isn't an apples to apples comparison, as all the laptops laying around were DDR4 gaming Windows based models. But thanks to JDAC standards, one DDR4 low power chip is less different from another than you might think. Which leaves us to wonder, if raw power consumption of more chips wasn't the issue, what exactly did Apple mean when they said more than 16 gigabytes of memory wouldn't be efficient enough for a notebook. Linus's theory is that using up more PCB space for memory chips could have eaten into the internal space that Apple preferred to use for a bigger battery. John thinks that's bull and speculates that it's a planned obsolescence move. As for me, I'm not sure. What I do know is that the truth is out there. And you should leave a comment down below with your opinion as well. And also, by the way, Hi Lewis, I'm assuming you're watching this one, and I'd love to hear what your opinion is too, so let me know down below. Blue Apron allows you to create delicious chef-designed recipes at home. Blue Apron delivers all of the farm-fresh ingredients you need right to your doorstep in exactly the right proportions. No trips to the grocery store and no waste from unused ingredients. Recipes are delivered in a refrigerated box, so ingredients will stay fresh if you're not at home while the package arrives at your door. And there's no commitment. You can skip or cancel the service at any time, and each menu is between 500 and 800 calories per person. Blue Apron lets you learn to make new recipes and cuisines so you can get out of your dinner rut of making the same old dishes relying on the same takeout stuff every freaking time. And the first 100 people that sign up will get their first three meals on their first Blue Apron order for free using the link in the description down below. Thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do, but if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit the like button, or check out where to buy the stuff that we featured in this video on Amazon, like laptops that have 32 gigs of RAM. Also linked in the description is our merch store, so you can buy cool stuff, although I think this sweater is like sold out and not in our merch store and stuff, but you know, there might be another drop of those someday. Someone's gonna kill me, because that's not actually gonna happen, but anyways, don't worry about it. Also check out the community forum, which is linked down below, and now that you're done doing all that, that, you're probably wondering what to watch next. So check out this video, which is Terran's EV3. Review. That part's important.